Hello, Aquarius. Welcome to your weekly reading for June 10th to the 16th. This is for Aquarius and Aquarius Rising End. You know we're going to jump right into it, Aquarius. Uh, what a week. What a big week. You know, there's only four major aspects, but these are the squares that I talked about last week. Uh, a couple of them, uh, three of them. But, well, let's get into it. Let's get into it right away, right away. All right. On Tuesday, June 11th, Aquarius, this may be a big day for you. Mars squaring Pluto. Now, I mentioned it in your last week's reading, possibly even in your monthly forecast. This is a big one. This is the biggest square to look out for especially because Pluto is in your sign all right Pluto is officially in your sign for the next 20 years but this is going to be a big deal because Mars is in uh Taurus in your fourth house okay so this could be a day first of all these are two very powerful planets all right they're very 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 powerful and when you see them in a square like this you kind of see the more aggressive side of them Mars being the planet of uh, of war and conflict Pluto being all about destruction and it has that intensity. And so they're getting together. They are come at me broing. Okay. They're like, come at me, bro. Uh, they're definitely in a place where they're 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 sticking their leg out, they're trying to trip you up. Just know that around this time, there may be something where you you may feel a little bit of squeeze and it may have to do with something at home because Mars in Taurus is your fourth house. All right. Your domestic sector, your home, your actual home, your, you know, real estate, uh, family, children, parents, significant other things that have to do with home. OK, there may be a little bit of a squeeze you feel around this time. It could be, you know, a landlord that is just really being landlordy okay being very landlordy around this time so just know that this is a day where you just want to be cool team aquarius you want to stay frosty all right don't let anyone get under your skin this is a time where you want to be and handle everything with grace okay be diplomatic in these situations remember it is just a square that you will feel for a few days it really depends on your chart. You know, some Aquarians, I say this in every, all the time, like every Aquarius has a different birth chart. It makes you different from every other Aquarius in the world. So some may feel it, you know, maybe a one or two out of a 10. Some may feel like a four out of 10, but even still at the same time, just, you know, as long as you are be, you know, graceful and trusting your intuition, tapping into your inner chumba wamba all day, every day, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. The other thing is Mars squaring Pluto for the collective okay therefore it could be you all right there could be something where you get really uh, you know you just uh, what you get into godzilla mode bridezilla mode whatever mode whatever mode so that's why i'm saying just be cool around this time okay just remember let karma work its magic all right these squares are tests they are tests and they're uh pushing you they're pushing you as i said they're pushing you to become you know the best version of yourself the best version of yourself all right now the other thing i want you to be mindful of on this day mars you know is physical energy uh avoid things that are exhausting or where you have to exert a lot of energy physically. All right. Don't try to, you know, ride your bike from, uh, Connecticut to, uh, Arizona. It just uh, like this day. Don't do it. You may want to do it. And like, this is a day where just, you know, be cool, be cool. All right. Because it can be draining this day. All right. Now on June 12th, Wednesday, uh, Mercury will square Saturn. So now you see we're moving into the thick of the Saturn squares. We're coming out of the Venus, uh, uh Venus and the sun squaring Saturn from last week. And now you're feeling Mercury square Saturn. Now Mercury squaring Saturn, Mercury, the planet of communication of logic, thinking the messenger planet. And you've got Saturn, the authority here, the taskmaster, you know, the planet of life lessons and what not really really you know authority um so just really i mean think of it as a coach a go a coach who you know pulls you aside says kim i'm going to put you on the bench i'm going to put you on the bench you got to sit this out you're going to sit out the game all right so this is a time when mercury square saturn you may hear things that you don't want to hear uh even like someone being critical there could be th you know things like that uh so just have this moment to observe things okay and you know is should there be a situation like that um really 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 uh remember to be responsive not reactive all right but when you respond 
gracefully, all right? Gracefully, and you're going to be fine. Just it is a day to be mindful. Now, Saturn is in Pisces in your second house. So there really could be something here that really tests your, you know, self worth and self value. But there also could be something here regarding money. Okay, there could be something where even you overthinking things in terms of finances and money, because Saturn also rules your second house that is also uh, finances and money and whatnot. So just keep that in mind. And again, you're probably already feeling a little bit of that squeeze from Venus and, you know, the sun squaring Saturn. Uh, so just, again, it is a good time to just observe things, observe things. And don't let anyone get under your skin, right? Don't let anyone get under your skin. You never want to do that. If they do, just exfoliate, okay? Exfoliate with that amazing Aquariusness that you are, all right? So uh, the other thing is, remember, Mercury and Saturn, it could be you. You did So be mindful about the things that you say. Always be, you know, the better person in a situation. And this is a day where you don't want to make, like, really big agreements as well. You know, Mercury squaring Saturn, right? So uh, just know this could be a day where someone's fishing for, you know, a power trippy type of thing. The same thing as, like, Mars squaring Pluto. Uh, for example, by the way, I actually received an email from a colleague where they it was uh, very passive aggressive, but you know that they were fishing for a they really like a gotcha. Mo they really wanted to, and uh, I responded, "Thank you so much." That was it. Nipped it in the bud. Okay. Nipped it in the bud. I avoided that bear trap. Uh, so, and everything's fine after. So now Friday, June 14th, the sun conjuncting Mercury. We got a Mercury Kazemi. All right. Now Mercury, uh, well, Kazemi is when the planet is in the heart of the sun. And so this is a refresh. This is a really big refresh of the mind of thinking. Okay. A lot of clarity, perhaps a burst of clarity that happens around this time. Brilliant ideas, even problem solving. So it's really nice because it kind of comes in and saves the day after Mercury squaring Saturn. So I absolutely love this. And remember, Mercury is in Gemini, all right, in his domicile. So this could have a greater impact than you would believe. This is, you know, Mercury does really well in Gemini. This is all in your fifth house of pleasure and joy and love and romance and family, children, recreation even. Uh, so really, really, really uh, great day. Uh, procreation as well. And this is a really great day to negotiate. A uh, really good day to, you know, uh, even even writing, researching, learning new things around this time. There could be something that you, you know, you have this bing moment and you're like, oh, I really want to learn how to uh, make uh, Kit Kat bars. Whatever you want to do. It, it's it's up to you, Aquarius. Now, on Sunday, June 16th, we now have Venus and Mercury squaring Neptune. Um, listen, uh, bef yeah, actually, before I get there, you know, this week we have a uh, stellium in Gemini. All right. We've got uh, actually super cell. We have Mercury, the sun, Jupiter and Venus all in Gemini, all in your fifth house of love, romance, uh, 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 everything that I mentioned earlier. OK, joy and pleasure. So that's really nice. OK, so you'll definitely still feel that energy. You'll still feel, you know, very social. And that's why, you know, with Mercury squaring Saturn, that's why you just want to be extra careful because, you know, about the things that you say because everyone's being social right now. Everyone's being social. You're probably seeing it even on social media. Uh, people are being a lot more vocal, not holding back. That's just how things are with Gemini season, all right? Uh, but you could also see like a lot more activity, like people just, you know, being more, you know, uh, conversational, whatever. And it, you, you get what I'm saying. Everything that I said in your monthly forecast. Now, uh, let's get to uh, Sunday. Venus squaring Neptune, Mercury squaring Neptune. This is going to be a big deal, all right? Now, this weekend is where... Uh, uh, you know, here's, here's, I'm going to tell you why it's a big deal. Mercury and Venus squaring Neptune. This really is, you know, honestly, just seeing beyond the veil, whether it's relationships, whether it is love, whether it is romance and, uh, money, whether it is something with money as well, there could be something around money here. Uh, because remember Neptune is with, uh, Saturn in Pisces. Okay. Now, uh, Neptune. So basically this weekend, just cut through the veil, cut through the veil, seek your truth, hold on to your truth. All right. Because with these squares, Neptune is spirituality. All right. It's compassion. It's imagination. It's intuition. So we love Neptune. But again, with these squares, you see the other side of Neptune and Neptune at this point is really trying to draw out that other side where it's like illusion and delusion and confusion 
and uh, pff, escapism. Okay. Uh, and that's, you know, a, a big thing. Neptune's like pushing you into escapism. So it could feel like this spiritual abyss, but you Aquarius have a light. You are a light. Shine your light. You're going to be fine. Trust your intuition. It's going to make all the difference around this time. All right. So uh, use your imagination too. Uh, really, really, you know, with Neptune pushing in those other areas like deception as well and illusion. You really want to have a foot on the ground. Okay. Maybe even two feet on the ground on this Sunday. All right. This is a time where these squares are really pushing you into that, that part. You know, when I say escapism, it's like making excuses to not have that conversation, you know, you have to have, or make that decision that, you know, you need to do things like that, things like that. Like, so just, uh, try to, you know, avoid any, uh, buy Felicia energy or, uh, uh, stores closed, gone fishing when you're actually literally sitting inside the store, maybe like thumbing through your TikTok, whatever it is, just face your truth, face your realities. And, and you're going to see that that's going to be something that's really special for you. Now, the reason why this is going to be a big deal is because you are okay. So beyond this weekend, beyond this Sunday, Neptune is in Pisces. All right. So Neptune is officially in, uh, has been in Pisces since 2011. Now Neptune is at 29 degrees in Pisces now. Okay. 29 degrees, a critical degree. There's 30 degrees at 29 degree. This is almost like a it's almost like a graduation. Okay. It's a graduation. It's like a toast. It's taking everything that you've learned on this karmic level, on this major karmic level since 2011 and using it now. All right. Using it. Neptune at 29 degrees. It will first, it'll be here at 29 degrees for a while. And the reason why is because Neptune is an outer planet that is very slow moving. Okay. It takes uh, uh, 13, 14 years in one sign, 13, 14 years in one sign. And so it's going to be at 29 degrees, Neptune, 29 degrees until September. September. And then from that point, it's going to waddle back a bit. 2025 is going to dip into Aries. And then it's going to move back up to Pisces. And then 2026, it's going to move officially into Aries for 13 years, 14 years. Okay. Before it does that, it will go back to 29 degrees. Okay. And there's going to be this big conjunction. There's going to be a big thing. This is going to happen during your birthday season in 2026. And so this is definitely going to be, that's going to be like full stop, like full closeout. But at this point at 29 degrees, really what Neptune is asking you to do, what have you learned from 2011 spiritually what has spiritually moved you have you really tapped into your spirituality are you trusting your intuition more you probably are neptune is the uh ruling planet for Pisces in its domicile so it's really helped you and pushed you in that direction okay having a lot more compassion really being more imaginative like all of those great things you know that neptune brings okay all of those great things remember neptune is also you know the subconscious or neptune and pisces sorry the subconscious hidden things uh the metaphysical it's uh uh, you know, the uh, the unseen dreams, things like that. You could have been having a lot more vivid dreams since 2011. But in any case, it is asking you, Neptune at 29 degrees in Pisces, surrender now. Surrender. Now that you know, now that you've built all this intuition, and now that you're really, you know, uh, forming this, you know, uh, spiritual growth, surrender the things that you know don't serve you well. Leave them behind. Before Neptune moves into this next cycle, don't bring those things that you know don't serve you well into this next cycle that's about to happen for you, okay? Now, what makes this really interesting is that, like I said earlier, Neptune takes 165 years, okay, to make up a, a, a complete orbit, right? Uh, the completing out, a uh, complete cycle of the Zodiac Wheel, okay? And so you have to think about 2011 when Neptune in, moved into Pisces. What happened 165 years before that, all right? Well, Aquarius, that takes us to 1846. All right. Guess what happened in 1846? Aquarius, you would know this. You would know this. Y'all are into astronomy and astrology. Uh, well, Neptune was actually discovered. All right. In the modern in, in the modern world. Uh, so this is a big deal because Neptune at 29 degrees, it's completing its full orbit orbit for the first time ever <laughs> for the first time ever so neptune at 29 degrees is almost like a like a celebration too it's almost like a celebration before it moves into this next cycle so kind of a significant 
thing that's happening, all right? It is a big thing. And so really, really, what Neptune really wants you to do as it, you know, gives you the Miss America wave and what, before it moves into Aries, it's like, do please surrender the things that are holding you back, that you know are holding you back. Really trust your intuition and, you know, uh, trust your, you know, be in touch with your higher mind, your higher self to evolve and to, you know, again, surrender, surrender the things that that uh, you want to leave back you know, in the past, you want to leave in the past. Uh, and you'll feel really good. You'll feel very rewarded around it. You know, this is a time where, uh, it, it's, it's, you know what it is. It's like one of those classic, um, you know, uh, someone who doesn't believe in themselves, uh, you know, doesn't think they're good enough about something, but then they have that moment of spirituality. They have that moment of self-belief. They have that moment of belief and then they, you know, win the game and then they, you know, get the girl or get the boy or, you know, they, uh, you know, beat the bad guy or they, uh, reunite with their lover making pottery as a ghost, things like that, things like that. You get what I'm saying. Uh, so keep that in mind. And over the weekend, uh, you know, we do happy fun. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Over the weekend, moon will be in Libra. Okay. The moon will be in Libra over the weekend here. So that's really nice. And, you know, uh, from the 14th to the 16th. So, uh, and there's that sweetness that so there could be something with like relationships, committed partnerships around that time. That's just really sweet. Okay. Family energy as well. So, uh, and spirituality for you, you know, Libra does rule your ninth house. So with that said, let's get to it. Aquarius, let's see what's going on for you for the week of June 10th to the 16th. Again, this is for Aquarius, Aquarius rising, Aquarius moon. If you want to read for any other, uh, placements in your chart, you are absolutely welcome to. And you know, if you are are looking at your chart just take a quick glance see where neptune's at see where neptune's got okay uh so let's get started aquarius let's see what's going on for you for june 10th to the oh to the 16th uh aquarius now uh and the other thing i was going to say is yeah sure we have some squares this week but uh hello think about last week all right that new moon in uh gemini one of the best new moons of the year we had uh the sun conjuncting venus that was amazing that venus kazemi we had jupiter trying pluto remember pluto's in your sign so you still are feeling those energies too there's a lot happening for you there's a lot happening <laughs> oh. aquarius ah you're amazing. You're absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, I love y'all. Y'all are just so great. Y'all are so great. You're, you're, you team Aquarius. If you're new to my channel, I'm an Aquarius. So, you know, we've got this bond. We got this bond. We're team Aquarius. We know, we know what's up. If that's what, you know, the kids still say these days, but you're good. You're absolutely good. You know, you're good. This is amazing. Hello. Uh, wow. Really big, really big. Uh, let's get started. Let's get started. Uh, you got the sun. Absolutely amazing. I really love this for you. Uh, it makes me think of uh, some past readings. Remember? Okay. So this is really great uh, because the sun came up in your past. So yeah, have things been nicer for you? Absolutely. Jupiter, Venus, the sun, Mercury, all of them moving into Gemini, your fifth house of love and pleasure and romance and, and, and family and children and, and sex and, and, and all of that we have recreation. Like you could be picking up you know, like hockey, whatever you want, whatever you want. Uh, but this is really absolutely amazing. Okay. The sun is in Gemini at this, at this time, but, uh, really, really nice, really, really nice energy here. There really is something really special about your spread. Now, this sun is often Optimism, it's, you know, uh, vitality, growth, it's abundance, it's everything that you would think that the sun is. The sun is the biggest destiny to our too. So coming in your recent past, it's just like, it seems like there's been a big shift. There's been a big shift. Uh, there could have been something that you have really moved toward. You could have felt like this cleansing, this refresh as well in your life. Listen, like, uh, it's, been, it's been 12 years. It's been 12 years since you've had Jupiter in your fifth house of love and pleasure and, you you know, it, it's it's really really nice, very very sweet. Remember, Jupiter is going to be there for an entire year, all right, an entire year. But for now, the Sun being in Gemini as well. That's just you know up until the twentieth, but eighteenth. Uh, 18th, uh, 20th, but anyway, uh, really nice. So yeah, there could have been something that you have, uh, just felt really good about things happening in your life and the direction things are moving. And like I said, that Jupiter, uh, true, uh, Trudeau Pline, uh, 
that Jupiter Pluto trine, really, really, really nice special for you. Now, uh, you got the star now in the heart of your spread. Hello, Aquarius. I mean, you know, this is your card and this is uh, an amazing card. One of the best cards. I mean, this is the star. All right. This is the star. And you even see you here, little water bear. All right. Little water bear. Uh, really nice. Really nice. This is uh, uh, like healing and wisdom and, and faith and having faith in yourself, having faith in the universe, having faith that everything's working out for you. This is really, uh, the stars are lighting for you, okay? This is the star, all right? The, you know, everyone talks, uh, wishing upon a star, yeah, however you want to see it, but this is all happening for you now. This is the week, okay? This is the week where things, the stars, when they say aligning for you, you could feel it now, all right? So this is going to feel really great. Now, you know, even, you know, uh, I think I brought this up in your monthly forecast, like uh, maybe even your yearly forecast for sure. Um, well, you see that it is card 17, one seven equals eight, right? And so uh, eight is, uh, it. 2024 is the year of eight. Eight is prosperity, abundance, success. You see all the stars are eight pointed. There are eight stars. There's so much happening here, but this is just really sweet. This is really nice. It feels like there's something like this rebirth happening for you. Uh, in this, it, it, it could be even like a really big one actually with the sun and the star. Uh, this is really, really special. This is really great. There's something new happening uh, in your life. It's very apparent here. Um, and there's this sense of something's growing, okay? Something's uh, really growing here. Now, you do have the Eight of Pentacles in your challenge area. So just... Uh, you know, you're moving into a time where you're going to be more creatively driven, more, you know, socially active and, you know, uh, even like feeling a lot more love and feeling like you want to love. And maybe, you know, if you're single, like actually this is a year that you may meet the one this actually this month too. this month too. All right. Uh, and like a lot of energy around family and children, things like that. Like remember fifth house of joy and pleasure. Now, uh, here's the thing. You do have the eight of pentacles in your challenge area. So all this is saying is that uh just be mindful okay be mindful of uh not straying from your path all right it's basically saying like this card is just indicating like there could be a little bit of just like uh, not you know fumbling the ball fumbling the ball like not staying focused not staying uh, you know driven on all the things that you want to happen for you okay your path to enlightenment all the goals that you've set your for yourself all right so just keep that in mind keep that in mind that may be a thing it actually might be part of your transformation too there could be something with work where you're just like ah, i don't know if i want to do this anymore which is why you're doing something completely new uh but anyway let's keep going you've got the lovers all right so you got the lovers in your um crown so uh hello amazing uh lovers is uh you know attributed to gemini so uh there you go this is really nice remember all these planets in Gemini, you have four planets in Gemini this week. Again, your fifth house of love and pleasure and joy and sex and all those, you know, fifth house matters. But you've, I mean, this is really great because you also have Archangel Raphael here, who is the healer. So a lot of healing energy this week. Remember, healing, healing, healing. I mean, this is really, really nice. Uh, and you know, there is a sense of, yeah, a lot of y'all are thinking about relationships, okay? Thinking about relationships, thinking about love. There is a sense of uh, maybe even like if you are, uh, even if you are in a relationship, it, it, it like maybe even like thinking of uh, amplifying it or feeling that surge in it. Uh, but there's, uh, and if you're not here for love, you know, this can be career as well. It can also be something that it, this is like a really in depth, like a more intense, like type of love, but it also could be like career finding the perfect business partner, or it could even be something that is, uh, you know, like a lot of self love for yourself, uh, that, uh, in order to love what is the phrase? It, 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 you got to love yourself before you love someone else, that kind of energy as well. So that's something that you could be focusing on is this self love as well. But either way, it is just really beautiful energy. I mean, you've got the full abundance of the sun here as well. Now you've got, uh, the ace of wands and it, there is possibly some decisions you're going to be making this week. Now you have the ace of wands and the root of your spread. Okay. So this is really nice. Uh, it does seem like that there is something new coming through. 
for sure. I mean, you've it, it it's big, okay? It's a there's definitely something uh coming through and it really could be it really could be something career related, profession related. I wouldn't be surprised if some of y'all move in a different direction or maybe even pick something up, doing something on the side, like a side hustle, like some side gig, uh, like another sort of like income stream or whatnot. But a passion project, a big passion project could be coming through or you could be already investing your time into that. But whatever the case, I mean, aces usher in that new change and new beginnings and you see the seeds sprouting from this wand. Okay. And so, it seems like a lot of y'all may have already planted seeds. And, you know, we did have that new moon in Gemini where it was a great time to, you know, set intentions uh, last week. And, you know, new moons bring new beginnings too. And remember, that was a strong new moon. And you're definitely still going to be feeling some of that effect, especially with the other aspects that were happening around the time. But this is really great. This is your passions, your ambitions, you're moving forward. Now you got the Knight of Pentacles in your future. And so there is uh, this rhythm that's happening where there's this stability and this, uh, you know, in it to win it energy. You know, the Knight of Pentacles is very diligent, really just, you know, handle things very meticulous, very, you know, pragmatic as well. But this is someone who's in it for the long haul. All right. This is someone who likes to invest. All right. Investments, maybe. Remember, I talked about it, a big thing that was last week. All right. So you could s still be feeling that. And I'm not, it's not limited to like investments and finances, which could be a thing for you here with the knight of pentacles which is pentacles money and wealth but investments as in like i this new thing i'm like my heart's in it my soul's like i'm ever i'm in it to win it okay that commitment energy is really strong all right a lot of y'all are moving into that some of y'all could meet people this week and that could be you know this the the start of something really beautiful start of something really beautiful i love your spread aquarius this is absolutely amazing this is so amazing um and you do see that you have all major arcana uh, and these court cards, uh, you know, other than the eight of pentacles, uh, is there also, there may be, sorry, I'm staring at you. <laughs> there may be, uh, there may be something that really think about a skill that you have that you, that you may feel not be using it may be the week to just start thinking about using that skill okay something that you know that you're really really good at i think that uh you may uh, it may start coming into form this week all right so let's get to your stuff aquarius y'all oh my goodness what is going on y'all um if you like this reading would be great if you like subscribe leave comments let me know what's tell me tell me what's going on tell me what's happening tell me what's happening aquarius and uh yeah when you know i love you y'all are amazing uh aquarius oh my <laughs> okay um well you're good you know you're good this is absolutely amazing um you got the seven of pentacles okay uh yeah there i i would say take that time to think about this new thing that's coming through take a time to think about those investments think about those investments and again it doesn't have to be like stocks and 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 robin hood and, and and things like that i mean it can be and it can be because that is a big emphasis and again it is pentacles all right but think about what you've invested into up until this point all right and really think about uh is it something that i want to move further with or you know my happy stop at this point uh so it's all about moving forward for you but look at what look at all this abundance look at all this newness this refresh this regeneration this new you this this uh, abundance and, and and stars aligning for you in this beautiful path forward now uh you have the queen of wands as well this is absolutely amazing we love the queen of wands she is uh very charming she's the most popular queen she is very charismatic she's very regal she gets whatever she wants she gets whatever she wants she has that power to attract whatever she wants okay really great thing about her you know uh and here's the thing like came on, coming up in your external factors area yeah there could be someone that uh really comes through and opens opens doors for you in this magical way then you're just like oh wow like 
crying off your mascara like that type of like what is going on uh this is someone who can really just like even like non-verbal communication just give a look to someone across the room and then they you know hit the golden buzzer for you this is really special really nice it could be an aries by the way it could be an aries you know queen of wands is aries it could be an aries rising it could be an aries means but either way it's just still someone on your side and it it tells a perfect story in terms of it may be something that you've been really seeking and really wanting. Um, and there's so much promise here. And one of the reasons why is, remember, we started off with the sun card. You see the sunflowers in the sun card. You see that the queen of wands actually holds the sunflower with the sunflowers in her throne as well. So there is that uh, association. So she has the full powers of the sun as well. Now you also have the king of pentacles, which is really great. Yeah, you want it. I want you to have it. All this richness. He is the richest king. He has all this wealth. You can't even look at all that harvest. Look at all that harvest. Okay. He holds a golden scepter. This golden scepter creates a lot of abundance. This wealth this richness. Anything he touches turns to gold. All right. So this is really nice and this is just uh you know it's not just that wealth and again yes finances and money uh but wealth in like your career and family like wealth in many forms of the word okay but this is also someone who's very pragmatic he's really like a caretaker he takes very good care of like the people around him like i really love this and you're moving in that direction and you can have that you can have anything you want like you've got so much like the universe is is really on your side uh more so than than it's almost like this week is like wow that's insane and amazing and then lastly your bff here the king of swords um come on you you love this dude he's you king of swords is uh aquarius uh kings are air uh or kings are fixed swords are air you're the fixed air sign um and so, and this is all about like that intellect, right? The King of Swords, this uh, just very, ba you know, being in that place where you are an authority, you are that decision maker, you are, you know, you've got your head above your uh, above the clouds. But remember what I said from the very beginning about facing your truth. It seems like you are not going to have any problems with that. It seems like you've already done that. <laughs> it seems like, well, you've got, you had Saturn and Capricorn for a while. You had Pluto and Capricorn in your 12th house for a while. So so you've already done that. You've done the work, but still continue to do it. Still continue. You want to do it every day, but even still, but here we go with the King of Swords this is someone who does have a lot of power, um, a lot of authority. And this is someone who is very strategic, very cunning, very clever, just very, you know, uh, really, really has faced his truth. No one can hide anything from this King as well. He looks directly at you. He is ready to just get going to, and he is, uh, this, he is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, so it just seems like you are going to be at this high degree of just like almost like this cerebral energy that's really nice but also visceral i mean wow aquarius if this isn't your best weekly reading then my name is not jimmy yeah listen aquarius this is really good and I'm, I'm 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 very happy for you I'm happy for us. Uh, this is really great. I'm 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 trying to see if there's anything that I'm just like, well, watch out for this. Watch out for this. I mean, like it really is just this Eight of Pentacles in your challenge area. Just you know, it is. Uh, just continue to you know have that passion, have that fire, have that determination. Just continue to move forward with that. There really again could also be something where there's someone in your world within your orbit that could be maybe like uh, you know two steps behind you. That's not like keep, keeping up, and they may be losing interest in something that you know you're building building together uh but other than that like you have that capacity just to to take it to a place where there's this stability and there's this longevity and there's this you know uh just uh, again like diligence and, and to take it forward uh for the long haul i mean you're good you're absolutely good aquarius thanks so much for tuning in if you like this reading it would be great if you like subscribe leave comments tell me what is going on aquarius 
talk to me. You're in your Gemini era, your fifth house era. Um, next week we've got, oh yeah, next week. So we're you know, moving to cancer season. We got that full moon in Capricorn. We got a lot happening next week, but uh, we'll talk about that next week. Thanks so much, Aquarius. This is a great, this is probably your best, this is your best weekly reading in a long time. I'm very excited for you. I'm very excited for you. Thanks so much, Aquarius. I'll see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.